As you know from history lessons, encryption was used for secret message exchange as early as in Roman times. Much time has passed and encryption tools have been improved considerably since then, but the general purpose remains the same. Encryption is a tool that protects data from unauthorized access. Encryption is based on transforming a message or text into an outwardly meaningless sequence of symbols. To decrypt such a message, it is necessary to know the secret that allows transforming the encrypted message back into the original text. So, to ensure message confidentiality, the secret must be known only to the sender and recipient. In the early days of encryption, the encryption algorithm itself was typically kept secret. However, this approach is not very useful. If the algorithm leaks out, it will have to be replaced completely. Modern encryption tools use known data transformation algorithms. What is secret in this case, is a special parameter of the algorithm, a key. A key is a binary sequence whose length ranges from tens to thousands of bits, key length depends on the employed algorithm. This schema where the data transformation algorithm is known and only the key is secret is more flexible. If a key leaks, it is sufficient to change the key without changing the algorithm. When evaluating reliability of an encryption algorithm, the algorithm is considered to be wide known, and only the key is considered to be secret. It does not necessarily mean that companies actually make their encryption algorithms and standards public. However, even if this information becomes known, it will not considerably reduce data protection reliability. An algorithm must meet numerous requirements, which were introduced mainly to prevent text decryption using statistical analysis. For example, any modern algorithm must make encrypted text statistically similar to a random set of symbols. It must be impossible to restore the original message from these pseudorandom symbols without the key. Impossible in the encryption context means, requires lots of time or computational resources, whose cost a priori exceeds the cost of the encrypted information. If we are talking of the same algorithm, the longer the key, the more time is necessary to break it and decrypt the text. However, comparing different algorithms by key length would be wrong. For example, the AES-128 algorithm having 128-bit keys, is more reliable than 3DES algorithm, a modification of DES, that has 168-bit keys. Encryption is still being used to provide safe data exchange. Almost all Internet users encounter HTTPS Secure Protocol and other uses of SSL TLS, technology. The data are encrypted and decrypted on the fly on the computers that establish a secure connection. If messages are intercepted on the data transfer channel, they will be encrypted and meaningless. The keys used for encryption are stored locally on the computers and are used automatically. The users often even do not know that the transferred data are encrypted. Another field where encryption is widely used, protection of data at rest. In this case, the user can encrypt data on a persistence medium to prevent unauthorized access. The user can decrypt the medium at any time and read the data. It is similar to safe data exchange, but the users transfer the data to themselves, and in time rather than in space. Yet there is a significant difference between safe data storing and transmitting. If we are talking about storing, the key used for encryption and decryption must not be saved on the same medium as the encrypted data, because this enables criminals to use this key to decrypt the medium. It is the user who must carry the key. There are two main methods for solving this issue. Generate the encryption key based on the password used for logging onto the system. Save the key on a device the user carries. Once the key appears in the system, the other processes involved with information decryption are easy to automate. Usually, encryption and decryption of protected data is performed by a special driver that provides seamless access to information once the user submits the key. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud allows you to configure encryption of managed devices running Windows and Mac OS. The encryption management feature is available only if you activated Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud under a Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Plus license. Devices running Windows are encrypted by using BitLocker Drive Encryption. BitLocker is a full-volume encryption feature included with Microsoft Windows versions starting with Windows Vista. BitLocker is usually included with standard personal versions of Windows. In server versions of Windows, BitLocker is usually absent by default, it can be installed if necessary. If the BitLocker component is installed, the shortcut menu of any logical drive will contain the command turn BitLocker on. BitLocker's encryption object is a logical volume. When encrypting the volume where the operating system resides, BitLocker places the loader and other service information to the system partition of the drive. This partition remains non-encrypted. 
Kaspersky Endpoint Security is compatible with BitLocker on all Windows versions where it can be installed. Microsoft Windows 7 or later, Windows Server 2008 R2 or later. Without Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, the BitLocker component is usually managed via Group Policies GPO. GPO does not permit enabling or disabling BitLocker directly, but GPO parameters may conflict with the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud profile settings and hamper enabling encryption. For example, if saving the key to a removable drive before encryption is configured, enabling BitLocker via the Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud will fail. We recommend that you disable BitLocker management in group policies, meaning, switch all parameters to not configured, to avoid conflicts with the KES security profile. If BitLocker encryption is enabled already, changing the component parameters in the group policies will not influence encryption. Encryption settings are located in the Management Settings section of the Security Profile. Encryption of hard drives is disabled by default. Enable it and save the changes. The KES Cloud Security Profile permits you to set some of the BitLocker parameters. Usually, the standard settings need not be changed, but sometimes adjustments can solve compatibility issues or improve performance. The following parameters are available in the Security Profile. Allow use of authentication requiring pre-boot keyboard input on tablets. This parameter permits enabling pre-boot authentication on tablets and other devices, that do not have a keyboard. If this checkbox is cleared, an attempt to enable encryption on a tablet will fail. If selected, the built-in virtual keyboard will be used for entering the password. Such a keyboard is available on Windows 8 and later. Use hardware encryption. Improves performance because data is encrypted and decrypted by a chip built into the hard drive rather than by the central processor. Use Trusted Platform Module TPM, or use Password. BitLocker can store the key for a logical disk simply on the drive, encrypted, password protected, or in a special chip on the main board, which is named Trusted Platform Module TPM. TPM is considered to be a safer store than the drive, but the difference is not very significant. TPM permits checking OS integrity before starting the system, and also using PIN instead of a password. PIN comes in handy for non-standard keyboard layouts, because BitLocker supports only English. When Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud receives the command to enable BitLocker from Kas Cloud Security Profile, it opens a window in the user session that prompts for the pre-boot authentication password. A single password is issued for all users of the computer, which is not related to their domain passwords. As soon as BitLocker receives the password, it generates a master key for encrypting the disk. Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud sends the master key to Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud Server to be able to decrypt the drive if the operating system breaks down. In order to retrieve the master key you need to contact Kaspersky Support Team. As soon as a master key has been created, BitLocker requests a restart of the operation system to verify that initial settings were applied correctly. At the first restart after encryption has been enabled, before the system starts, BitLocker will prompt for a pre-boot password. If the user enters the correct password, BitLocker will consider that encryption works properly and after the OS boots, disk encryption will begin. If the user presses escape on the keyboard, BitLocker will consider it to be an error, OS will boot, but encryption will not start. The user can interrupt encryption only at the first restart. If the first authentication succeeds, BitLocker will not permit starting the system without entering the password anymore. If PIN is to be used instead of a password according to the KES Cloud Security Profile, the password request window and authentication look exactly the same. The only difference is that digits are to be used solely. To verify that encryption process has been started open Manage BitLocker section in the control panel. Here you can see actual BitLocker status. In addition BitLocker icon will be displayed in the system tray. Wait for the BitLocker to completely encrypt the system. Report about encryption status of managed devices permits monitoring the status of all encrypted devices. 
navigate to Reports tab from the Information panel and select Necessary Report. Encryption status shows whether encryption has been enabled according to the policy. Encryption is not supported, main as none of the encryption components is installed. No encryption policy specified, means at least one encryption component is installed, but encryption is not enabled in the KESS Cloud security profile. Meets the policy, means all drives are encrypted, encryption operates properly. Devices running Mac OS X are encrypted by using the File Vault Disk Encryption feature. File Vault is Mac OS's built-in full disk encryption feature. It's designed to encrypt your Mac's hard drive and all of the files located on the drive using 128-bit ICE encryption with a 256-bit key. File Vault was introduced with Mac OS X Panther 10.3. Mac OS X Lion and newer offer File Vault version 2 which is a significant redesign. It encrypts the entire OS X startup volume and typically includes the home directory, abandoning the disk image approach. For this approach to disk encryption, authorized users' information is loaded from a separate non-encrypted boot volume. Mac OS recovery partition remains non-encrypted. On Mac devices, encryption is performed in a similar manner. First of all, let us assign the laptop security profile to Alex, who owns a MacBook. Encryption settings are located in the Management Settings section of the Security Profile. Encryption of hard drives is disabled by default. Enable it and save the changes. When an administrator starts File Vault encryption of a device from Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud, Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Mac prompts a user of this device to enter his or her credentials. Disk encryption only starts after the user provides the credentials and the device is restarted. Encryption occurs in the background as you use your Mac, and only while your Mac is awake and plugged into AC power. You can check progress in the File Vault section of Security and Privacy Preferences. Any new files that you create are automatically encrypted as they are saved to your startup disk. When File Vault setup is complete and you restart your Mac, you will use your account password to unlock your disk and allow your Mac to finish starting up. As we mentioned earlier, the administrator can consult reports to check the encryption status of the managed devices. The report on encryption status shows whether encryption has been enabled according to the KESS Cloud security profile. The applying policy status means that encryption or decryption of drives has started according to the security profile assigned to the user who owns the device. As soon as encryption has been completed on the managed device, the encryption status report shows that there are two laptops with the meets the policy status now, which means that two laptops, Windows and Mac OS, were encrypted by means of Kaspersky Endpoint Security Cloud.